Dat is een hele mond vol daar. Goeie naam, Abel. Ek hoop jylle gaan my verskoon as ek in Engels gaan praat. Ek kom nou so 8 jaar terug, toe ek met Google gewerk het. Toe het hulle my genade en gevraag, ons wil graag die internet Afrikaans maak. Maar daar was niemand in die hele Google wat Afrikaans gepraat is nie. Toe vraag hulle maar die Hollande om te help en te sê, hoe maak jy daai A met die cirkelkie om? Hoe sê jy het in Afrikaans? Apestaart. Apestaart, ja. In Nederland sê ons apestaart. En dis waar het omtrend gestop het. So, as jy my verskoon, gaan ek het in Engels doen, want ek weet nie om hoe het hierdie goed is in Afrikaans te praat, want daar is nie Afrikaanse woorde voor dit. Ok. So, switching to English. I think for tonight, what I'm excited about is the opportunity that is here for all of us. I've been into digital marketing over the last 12 years, but I actually am not a technology person. Why I do what I do is because I know what a tremendous impact it can have on people's businesses. It really has an enormous impact for you to take your business from where it is at the moment and to take it forward, or to open up new opportunities as well. So I believe that it will present you with ways to grow your business, but also potentially to take your business outside of Stobart and to, pr to grow the economy, not just that's happening inside of Stobart, but also to take it outside of there, right? So we can grow the amount of yeah, the growth amount of income that flows to still work. So I'm going to present some of those opportunities and and give you hopefully very practical ways about doing that. Timo, to be very practical, would you mind just moving the podium a bit to the side? This way? Yeah. I think in due time maybe it will block some of the things that we would love to see on your slides. Okay. Thank you. No problem. <coughs> What I'm not going to talk about tonight is AI, okay? <laughs> I know that I worked at Google, and I remember when I was working there, I frequently got the people asking me questions around, yeah, you know, I lost my Gmail account password. Can you help me? <laughs> I'm not going to do that, okay? <laughs> I'm going to talk about something else tonight. So, just, I'm not going to talk a lot about me, but there's a couple of things I do want to mention about my background and also why I'm here. So, as I mentioned, I'm born and bred in the Netherlands, worked, worked and lived in Ireland for four years with Google, and then moved here. And a lot of people normally ask me, but why did you come here? Everyone wants to leave here. Everyone wants to go that side. Why did you come here? And I can summarize it because I saw the immense opportunity that was here if, if, if we bring the digital economy to South Africa. You know, where we are as a country in terms of our digital economy, we're far behind many other developing countries in the world. And this is not just on a big scale, this is actually for local business. That's the lifeblood of the digital economy. And on the right hand side, you can just see a few of the logos of businesses that I am involved with or that I've started up over the last five years. And the common denominator of all those businesses is that it was all on the internet. One of those businesses, actually two of those businesses were in the United States, but they were run here from South Africa. So a lot is possible if you understand how this works and how you know, if you know how to take it outside of your area where you live. But that's maybe for another topic where we talk about how do you sell online? How do you bring your products to the world? Okay, today what we're gonna focus about is the business that are currently there. How do we grow them? How do you take them online? So, why online? 
Well, I think there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. And one of the first things is, maybe as a question, <clears throat> some of us maybe have thought about um, that you're too much on your phone. Or you see your spouse and you say, you, know, you spend too much time on your phone. Sounds familiar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> But if we think about it for a moment, it helps us to get into the right frame of mind because we are here as local business owners, but we're also consumers, right? We are also each other's customers. And we need to think like our customers in order to help to help us reach them. Okay. Now, there's a little bit of a story around that. <laughs> um, <laughs> this also applies to husbands, by the way. <laughs> I remember we moved here in January from uh, our best port, close to Gauteng. And we didn't know this town, we didn't know the shops, we didn't have a network yet of people we could ask. And I remember in February, my wife, who loves a takeaway, mm -hmm. asked me on one Sunday evening, can we not get takeaway, maybe pizza or something? And I remember being used to just ordering on my phone to get pizza delivered in you know, the best port where we live. There was probably two or three places where you could order pizza and would be there in the next 20, 30 minutes. And I remember thinking to myself, so what am I going to do? I don't know anyone that could, I don't know any place. There's no Roman's pizza, there's no Domino's, none of that is here. So I went online and I searched pizza delivery, takeaway food, anything of that. And there was nothing. There was nothing. No, web, no website, no restaurant said that they ordered to deliver pizza on a Sunday evening at 6 o'clock here in Stilpon. So I found some restaurants, drove to them, didn't find anything. And we ended up going with fish and chips. All right. But the, the moral of that story, or the takeaway from this story, is that just by having some basic hygiene information in place about your business helps an enormous amount to actually bring a customer closer to you. Actually helps you to make sure that when customers are looking for you, you are here. Right? It's not that difficult. It's I call it hygiene, and that needs to be in place. Now, just to understand it a little bit better, let's consider for a moment how many of us as consumers are online. So, just by show of hands, how many people use online to do their banking? It's almost everyone, right? How many of you have bought something online in the last month? A lot of people. How many have been on social media today? You don't have to tell me how many times. So we, we know that the amount of people that are online, and specifically in Stilbach, most people are online. In South Africa, about 70 to 75% of people are online, but in more upmarket areas, more affluent areas, that is much higher. Now, according to Google, there's currently 10,000 people in Stilbach which are online on a monthly basis. I don't know how many people live in Stillwine, but I think this would be a good indication of how many people we've got. Right? This includes people who come into the town and leave again. Mm. Okay. So 10,000 people. Those are all your potential customers. <laughs> From those people, we've got we've got a thousand people every month in Stillwine who search for takeaway. So some of you raised your hand when you said you were shopping online. You're not the only one. Mm. Okay, a thousand people that actually search for takeout, and probably even more people who already go to the website directly. Mm. All right. There's a big opportunity. Something I found interesting when moving here and getting to know people is that a lot of people have come to still buy to start a new life, or they want to get away from their old life for different reasons. And we actually see it reflected in the way people go online. Because every month there's more than almost 500 people 
who search for motivational life quotes and say, how am I going to focus my life going forward? What am I going to put on my wall? Another way in which we see that is that there's more than 250 people who search for we buy cars on a monthly basis and still buy. And that is one thing which I've seen uh, coming from the Gauteng area. Having a big fancy car is really important over there. Not so important here. Do you agree? You hardly drive around anyway. It's such a small town, right? And then the last thing is, and this is just a small amount of people who search for Woolworths. <laughs> but that's probably just people who moved here from cutting the last month. <laughs> so let's make it a little bit more practical because this is about what people search for and some of this presents opportunities. Some of this is just interesting to know. But the main point that I take away from this is that we are all online. And a lot of our life actually revolves around the information we look for. And the first thing we do is we grab our phone. What does that mean for local business? Let me show you an example. Um, Rahul spoke earlier about ESCOM. The graph here at the top shows you over the last seven months how many people were searching for load shedding schedules in Stolbach. Okay, You can see how it follows the peak over the over the month when it was really high in May. I hope you guys can see it on this side as well. During that time, when it was high, what did we see? We see an increase in people searching for gas. Right, in the same time. Where it used to be very small, it peaked at 120 people a month. There are people looking for gas bottles, gas solutions, gas stove, etc. You can see the peak at the same time. Okay, when people search for solar panels, All right? Those are not people who are looking for answers or information. They're looking for solutions. <coughs> they're looking for products. And they're looking for ways to actually buy something, right? And in my research, searching online, I, I saw so many um, opportunities for businesses to just be there. This is not about having a whole big marketing strategy or spending lots of money. This is just about making sure that when somebody searches for your business and the products or services you offer, that you're there. That's all that you need to do. That's step one of getting this right. Now, <clears throat> there is a really nice tool that is available to everyone, that is free, where you can actually find out more about this information. Okay? It's called Google Trends. Google Trends. And you can put in any type of words where you can find out what are people currently searching and what, what is the demand for it and what are other people searching as well. Okay, so that's really, really helpful just to get an idea of in this area, what are people actually searching? Are they searching for my products? And if they are searching, what are they searching? What can I do to respond to them? So that's been really helpful. <clears throat> now the question then maybe becomes, how do I make the most of this opportunity? We know that people are online. We know that people are searching, we know that people are actually doing a lot of different things online. What do I do with it? How do I convert that demand that's there? How do I convert that into business? So I want to talk a little bit about the how of that. And a lot of us, um, there's a lot of people who advertise throughout the town, right? You've got different places where you can advertise. But I remember a long time ago, 2009, that um, the Google CEO, Eric Schmidt, he said, every business is a digital business, but some people just don't know it yet. Yeah. Okay. Every business is a diff digital business, not because they are an online shop, but because their customers are online. And they eventually will find out that they need to be there as well. So <clears throat> when you start, how do you start? You must always remember that as a business that wants to grow, as, as you want to do marketing, you've got two priorities. The first one is look at this land cruiser for a moment. Looks pretty good, right? Most of us probably don't have a car like that. Maybe not everyone can afford it, but the more you look at this, the more you like, sure, 
I would really like to take a take a spin in a car like this. When I look at this picture, I'm like, yes, I see myself driving in there. I can just imagine what it's like driving through the wilderness with a group of friends, maybe, and really enjoying this. And as I talk about this, and as I think about this and visualize it, something grows that says, ah, I think I want this. I think I deserve this. Let me go and look around. And that's where a little bit of demand, a little bit of interest is sparked. Right? I don't need a land cruiser. I mean, I've got four children. There's no way I'm going to buy a land cruiser. Um, but something is done there that actually sparks a little bit of interest and demand that makes you take a step to go and look for something like this. The other thing is, <clears throat> so that, that's about creating demand. Right? It's creating new demand. And the other side of that is to catch existing demand. People who already search. The first one, generate new demand. That's where your biggest opportunity is. Right? I've seen with so many businesses that just to be online and be there and people are searching for what you have on offer, you quickly um, saturate that. You quickly are done with it. That's easy, that's the easy part. The hard part, but the most important part, is to actually create a brand online. Is to actually be there and be in people's faces, but they don't even know yet that they want to buy something from you. But you inspire them. You actually say to them, you want this. You're going to look good when you have this. Right? That's what branding is all about. That's why we see so many TV ads and billboard advertising, because they tell you, this is, you're going to look great, you're going to feel great when you actually buy this. And as a, as a business owner, that's actually your primary role where you're doing marketing. It's harder and it takes longer, but when done right, it's the right long-term strategy to build your business. Now, when it comes to that, I want to share a quick story. Um, one of my, my customers so, that I run with um, at my digital marketing business is Puma. The, the sports brand. I think a lot of you will know it. And we did a test with them where we they had a store in four ways. And we said, we want to grow the amount of people that come to your store. Because when people are into the store, they're going to buy a lot more products. Um, we're not going to run a promotion. We're not going to do anything special that pushes people to the store. We're just going to tell them, hey, did you know there's a Puma store? Did you know, and we, we did that specifically in the area around that store. We didn't spend a lot of money um, for that being big brand. And just for that week, we, we, we targeted all the people around that store and said, hey, there is a Puma store, you're gonna look great, come check it out. That weekend, they had the most amount of people in their store they ever had, mm. right? And it was, it was easy, it wasn't difficult. But it was all about making sure that you reach the right people with the right message in the right area. Mm. And they came, right? So that then really worked. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that's really important to know is that online influences offline. When I say online and offline, I mean when we search on our phone, it influences what we do, I almost want to say in real life, when we're not on our phones, right? We search and then we go. We search and we visit the store. We search and we actually buy. Um, and there's so many applications for that, but I can just think of one here in Stillbar. If you're here and you need to buy a gift for somebody, for example, right? There's so many places you can go to. But if I would just go online and search, for example, gifts for man or birthday gifts, and if I could be shown three, four shops with great ideas that I can go visit, and it would make my decision-making process a lot easier instead of having to go to all the different shops that potentially have something nice. Right? So there's so many opportunities to just respond to the, to the demand that's out there and make sure people can find you. <coughs> right, so <coughs> let's make it a little bit more practical. Mm. I think we're all convinced and we see that the amount of people that are here in this town looking for online solutions, answers, and they have money to spend in Stillborn. That's there. 
Now, how do you make it practical? <clears throat> the first thing is, and this is really just a hygiene thing. I call it hygiene because it's not difficult to do, but it's really helpful. Um, there's something called Google My Business. Now, I know probably a lot of you already has a Google My Business <coughs> profile. Okay? It's really just your digital home on Google. It sits on Google Search, it sits on Google Maps, it sits on Google on YouTube, and all these different places where if people search for something related to your business, it will feature there. And people from there can get direction to your business, they can call you, they can see reviews, etc. And I set this profile up for somebody here in Stilpa actually a few months ago who deals in construction materials. And not long after that, he actually got inquiries all the way from Johannesburg for people who wanted to build a house here. Right? He didn't spend any money, he was just there. And somebody was searching for a particular type of material, and they contacted him. That's the power of actually making sure you are there. Right? So <clears throat> here's just an example. Um, you can see here a car mechanic near me. You can see exactly the kind of results you get here. Um, but there's a lot of industries where there's none of this, right? I think I have a screenshot here, I don't, but um, for example, if somebody searches for air conditioning services, I did a search for them, there was nothing in Stillbot. No one in Stillbot who actually features with it. The closest is Mosselbot. A lot of times, a lot of um, examples for construction companies, you see ads for businesses from Cape Town, right? So there's an enormous opportunity for local businesses to connect with the people that are actually searching for this. Now what is nice about this, it's, it's completely free. Okay, so you as a business owner, you're not paying Google anything for this, you just have to be there. Um, you're free connected to the people that are actually looking to make a purchase or to, to buy a service right now. And they can act, take action immediately. Facebook also has a similar page like this, where you can manage your opening hours, you can manage your customer reviews, you can publish posts around your business, and then get in touch with you. And that already actually takes a lot of the pressure off you as a business, um, because it answers part of that question, do I need a website? Mm. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. Here's just a little bit more detail of what it actually looks like. <clears throat> if this is set up well, it's an enormous lead driver. I say lead driver as in it drives a lot of new business for you. And not just for people who are already living in Stillbot, but especially for people who come into Stillbot. They come here, they don't know all the little places where they can find different things. But they do one search, you pop up, you are there, and they call you or they come and visit your store. Okay, so really important, easy to set up, and quite impactful for your business. And I think one thing that I want to highlight from this especially is, um, is reviews. I think we all know how important it is to have good reviews. And in my research for this talk, I came across quite a few local businesses where I know the business owner, and I know they do their business well, but they had one or two reviews, and they were one or two stars. And when you see that, and you don't know the person, what are you going to think? You're going to think, ah, they're probably not legit. I, I don't think I'm going to give them a chance. And that's such a wasted opportunity. It's really important that if you already have a profile like this, make sure you collect reviews on a regular basis. Every happy customer is like, hey, would you mind just leaving a review? You can send a link from your Google profile to people on WhatsApp where they can just leave a review, and every review counts. Okay. So really important to get that right. Then the other opportunity is around advertising, search advertising. Um, the Google Business Profiles are only featured when people search something that is locational. Okay, so you won't feature with your business profile necessarily so much in other places. Where it gives you a lot more opportunity and control is through search advertising. And this is where you can actually rank at the top of Google for any keyword that you want to rank for. Here are some examples <coughs> for, for different businesses that are quite popular in, in Stillbot. As you can see there on the right hand side, this one, construction company. Both of those listings there 
or actually from Greta. But there's a lot of builders and a lot of construction companies already in Stobar, right? This is, a, this is an opportunity. And again, it's not difficult to do it. You just need to be there. And every time somebody clicks on that link and contacts you, that's a good lead. That's an opportunity. So what's nice about this as well is that you don't have to... What's great about Google Advertising as well is that you don't have to put lots of budget in, lots of money in, in advance. You pay what you want to use. If you say, I want to start with 500 rand, you start with 500 rand. And if you get too busy, you stop it. And you only pay when somebody actually clicks on your ad, right? Really, really important. You don't pay when somebody just sees your ad. That's, that's free advertising in a sense. You only pay for that. There's no upfront commitments, so it's very flexible and it works. And I remember about five, six years ago, I started working with a business in Johannesburg called Shane's Gas. Shane's Gas, okay? Just a one man shop who did gas installations. And he came to me and he said, you know, he thinks the opportunity must be much bigger than what he is currently doing. What can we do for him? Now, this is not somebody with, you know, millions of brands available for advertising. It's a, it's a one, it's a small shop. And he said, but I know that people are searching. What can you do for me? So <clears throat> we started setting up campaigns for him and just making sure that in his area where he was, every time somebody searches for, you know, gas installation or gas, uh, the COC certificate, he would pop up. And then people would be clicking on his ads, going to his website and calling him. And he would be able to say to me, look Timo, we're getting too busy. You know, don't, don't spend too much, take it easy. Um, we can't handle this amount of work. And he would figure out exactly what was the right amount for him to spend during the month. And he doubled his business just by doing this. Right? Doubled his business. So the opportunity is there. It really is. Now, what marketing won't do for you, it won't fix your business. Yeah. Okay, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> but if you've got something that is valuable, that you know people want, it amplifies it. It takes it further than where it currently is. So that's great what you can do with that. <clears throat> All right, so then I want to talk about the second part of marketing, and this is, I think, the most important part. Because what I've spoken about so far from a search perspective and from a business profile perspective is really, really just about making sure you are there when people are looking for you. Okay. But what comes after that is really about building a brand. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I know a lot of people are on social media and people love being on social media. Um, but I think a lot of the local business owners in Stilpa are missing an opportunity here. They're missing a trick because we've got the Stilpa um, advertentie group, right? Mm -hmm. and, and there's lots of people posting stuff on there, which is great. That really helps. Um, but I think the, the potential, the market that you could reach is a lot bigger than that. And what's important to realize is that when you post something on Facebook as a business, <coughs> and you just post it there. Only about 5% of the people who follow your page are actually going to see your post. Mm -hmm. Right? So only about 5%, 5 in 100 people. So that's not a lot. So if you want to get the word out there about a promotion you're doing, a competition, an ex exclusive something, you need to do something different than that. Okay? In, <clears throat> in my opinion, the advertentia group, that, that is not going to cut it. Because those are people that are on there, but you're not going to reach everyone else, right? That is not on that group, that is maybe here only for a certain time, and um, you can reach so many more people than that. So <clears throat> what is nice about specifically advertising on social media is that you reach everyone that you can reach, but you can target people specifically based on where they are, well, obviously they will be in this area, but also specifically around what they're interested in. So I could target, for example, people who are interested in still buy into, say, children's clothing. Okay. So that would be a group of people. That could be parents, could be grandparents, that I can reach specifically with content around that. 
Now, where this really becomes effective is when you start using great content. So you can see that something that looks inspiring, something that speaks to an emotion, is really where it's going to help. Um, because that builds a brand, that builds a, an inspiration, that builds actually something where you tell people, this is great, you, you sh you're really going to look good when you're wearing this, or when you buy this, or when you're actually using this product. And research has shown that when you use video material, video content on social media platforms, is the most effective way to build a brand. It's much more effective than any other form of advertising, whether it's TV or radio or billboards or any other form of advertising. Videos that you see on social media are the best because I think for a couple of reasons. First of all, you're very intentionally looking at this small screen. You're not sort of laid back or you're not just driving by. You are looking at your screen because you want to watch this. It's targeted, so you're looking at something that is actually directed to you. And a lot of times what you will see is that people have actually liked the post, which then builds uh, a form of social validation, right? social proof. If you see that your friends have liked this post and it comes to you, it has a lot more impact to you than when it's just there, but there's no other people who have actually said that this is great. So that's where this is really helpful. Okay, so to summarize, from a social media perspective, what is really important is that you start creating a lot of visual content. Images, videos, it doesn't have to be a very high production content because that's difficult and that's expensive, right? But just videos of real customers buying real products from you um, and getting that kind of input there makes, makes a huge difference. And then start posting it on Facebook and then Facebook and Instagram have the ability to actually boost it for you, right? Boosting it means that it doesn't just sit there, but it actually goes out. It gets amplified into the area where you are, for example, to the still by area. You can actually boost it so that everyone can see it. And I know of different people here in the still by area who have done things like this. And they immediately, they see a jump into their, their monthly sales or in their weekly sales after doing something like this. Okay, so it's, it's, it's very targeted, but it has an enormous impact when you actually do something like this. <clears throat> so then the big question, do I need a website? Okay. Now this is a, a tricky question because it really depends on a number of different factors. Um, <clears throat> some people really do need a website. For others, they can probably do without one. And that there's, that that's also fine. I think that the first thing I would want to say <coughs> about um, whether you need a website, because it's obviously an investment to make, is that if you need to build credibility for your business, if you need to build credibility for your brand, then you should probably consider uh, building a proper professional website. Now, when do you need credibility? Is when you need people to trust you. When you need people to trust you, whether it's a big transaction or whether it's maybe an emotional purchase, like building a house, for example. Right? I just finished the website for a construction company here in Stillborn. And just having those pictures there of them actually working on the house and seeing the finished product, it goes a long way in actually convincing people who are potentially not even in Stillborn but want to get a house built from somewhere else and come and live here to see. Okay, these guys, they really know what they're doing. They've built places, they know what it's like to build in this area. It builds credibility. <clears throat> Larger purchases, like I said, really important. But then also, it does present you with the opportunity to, to have a lot more content that you can show to people. And the more content you can show to people, the more you can convince them to buy from you. Okay, so that's where it really does help. And then, of course, it allows you to really take your business beyond still buy. Okay, I think if you if your focus of your business is just still buy, you probably don't need a big website. You probably will be fine with having the Google business profile or having the Facebook page that allows you to present a lot of your information, your opening hours, your reviews, you can do posts from your pages, your Google profile and your Facebook page. 
And those are great alternatives, and if they're managed and maintained well, they really help you to reach the right people. But if you want to go beyond it, if you want to sell products, if you want to sell a service that goes beyond it, I know people who are sitting in Stillby who've got a business with people all around the country, and they want to actually reach everyone in the country. And those people, they need a website to really advertise themselves well. <coughs> so, the question becomes, so what now? So you're sitting here maybe and you're like, sure, this is interesting and I want to do something with this, but what am I going to do now? What's my action plan? So I want to suggest a number of things to you. <coughs> the first thing, and everyone can do this, because everyone has a phone, and a phone has a camera, right? <coughs> the first thing I want to suggest you do is get your basic marketing elements in place. Just make sure you've got all those basics and you've got them ready, right? A good logo that's working well. A lot of different content, so images, videos where possible, um, reviews from customers, and then get your Google business profile and your Facebook and um, local pages, get them all ready. Because those are really just your, your framework with which you work, and they're going to allow you to quickly move if you've got all that content in place. And then I think the next thing, and this is hard because it quickly falls by the wayside, but it's to really say, okay, I'm going to fix a <laughs> weekly marketing moment in my week. Whether it's a Monday morning <coughs> or whenever it's maybe quieter in your week's routine. It's to say, this time, this half an hour, this hour is dedicated to building my brand, to building my business. I'm going to go out and we're going to collect reviews from my happy customers. I'm going to see if I can take a video, if I, can, if I can take some photos, and just really keep on producing that kind of content that keeps your, your content fresh, keeps your pages on social media, keep it fresh. You've always got something new to say to people. And then <clears throat> resist the temptation. When you're posting stuff, when you're doing maybe a, an ad, <coughs> to just do promotions or you know, discounts. Because... <clears throat> They, they work, but they don't really work, as in growing your business or building your brand. You know, as a business owner, what is really important is that you keep your, uh, your, your value as a business, you keep it high, you keep it strong, and people don't just come to you only when you have a special, right? Because then your margin, your profitability as a business is, is lower. And <clears throat> research has shown that most price and promotional activity doesn't actually bring in incremental business. Most of the time it's just people who were going to buy anyway, they just come two weeks sooner because now you've got 50% off. right? So you actually lose 50%, you just got the money two weeks earlier. So you, you want to stay away from doing that. Rather what you want to do is you want to tell people why your current prices are worth it. How do you do that? by showing that other people who bought from you were happy, right? That the quality of your product, the quality of your service is actually of that level that it guarantees and that it validates the price point that you use. And then where you could potentially work with a, a marketing specialist <coughs> is to actually start capturing the demand on search engines, right? There are people in Stillbuy who are searching for products and services, and if you are if you are not currently ranking there, if you're not currently actually showing up and people are searching for you, that's an immediate opportunity to grow your business. It's literally day and night. The moment you turn it on, you will see that people actually start hitting your, your pages or phoning you. You don't need a website to do that. Okay, once you've got a Google business profile set up, you can actually build a simple website through that. Where, which is free, which is hosted for you by Google, which you can customize with your content, your logo, your images, your information, and you can use that to send ads to that page. Okay, so that's an immediate opportunity, and that's literally two evenings in a week, and you're, you're set up, okay? So it's not difficult. And then <clears throat> the other thing is around building demand, which is really just making sure that you push that content that you've been creating in your weekly marketing moments, push that out. Make sure people see it. And don't expect fireworks on day one, because those things take time. 
Okay. But give it three months. Give it three months and see how is your brand, how is your business actually growing into, into this area and how are you especially finding new people who are coming to you. Not just the people that are wanting to buy from you anyway or that come back every month, but new people that now suddenly are aware of you and have seen your brand. So, I think in closing, there is an enormous opportunity for every local business only here to grow their business. From the people that live here, but also from the people that come and visit here on a monthly basis. They are looking for different products and services. And just aid by being there, being online, being present, you make sure that people can actually find you. And B, by <coughs> building a brand, putting yourself out there with great content that actually promotes you as a business. It's gonna help you to actually um, you have to grow your business and build in new customers. And then I think uh, the other exciting development that is coming in South Africa very, very soon is um, Amazon. Some of you may have heard of Amazon, the biggest retailer in the world, coming to South Africa very, very soon. And I think that is an opportunity that maybe at a future time we can talk about, but that presents a whole different opportunity to actually, from still buy, start selling products all the way into South Africa. Right? But that, that's, that's, that there's a whole different strategy around that. We're not going to talk about it today. But that, um, that's also going to be really exciting. So I think, Rafa, we spoke about maybe doing some Q&A. If there's some questions, um, we, can, we can maybe open the floor for that. Yeah.